Okay, hello, welcome again. We're going to be discussing spiritual attributes, spiritual attributes that make you an attractive partner. Um, we've talked about outer beauty, we've talked about inner beauty conduct, and today we're going to speak about inner beauty spiritual attributes. This, I think, is even better than the last one. I think this is the most important thing because as we said the first time, God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. These are the attributes that please God. These are the attributes that make that makes God happy. So these are the things I think we have to place the most value on. We're going to be going into the word. We're going to be reading from First Peter chapter three, which is one of my husband's favorite scriptures, and we're going to be looking at what God is saying to wives. First Peter chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5. And he said, Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, that they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. So this is one of the this is one of the passages in the Bible that speaks extensive, extensively on the conduct of a woman of inner beauty. And here Peter is saying wives even though he's speaking to wives i say it's generally for women i know this this talk is generally for women but it, it is generally for women um he's saying wives submit yourselves to your own husbands and he says in verse in verse um three he says let your adornment let it not just be your clothes and your hair and jewelry but the adornment that really matters is the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. Perhaps it's an ornament. And realize it's an ornament because it can be, you know, like a like a necklace, like this bangle. I can wear it, I can put it on and I can put it off. So I can put it on and I can put it off. So it is something you put on. This meek and quiet, it's something you put on. You see, everybody can shout, everybody can be mean, everybody can, can, can you know, can be saucy, everybody can be rude. But no, because we know we are daughters of the kingdom, because we know whose kingdom we represent, no, we decide we will put on the ornament of the meek and a quiet spirit. Because Bible says here, it says, in the sight of God, it is of great price. Another version says, it is not corruptible. You see, outer beauty can fade and does fade. Which is why at some age, you know, we start wearing more makeup. That's why we start um, doing some plastic surgery, start using um, different cream to strengthen our faces and to, so our, skins will, our skin will be moisturized and not smooth and not wrinkled. Because outer beauty can be corruptible. But you see, inner beauty, inner beauty is incorruptible. It doesn't fade, it doesn't change. But as I said, it's anonymous, so you put it on. It's something you wear consciously. It's something you 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 determine to do consciously, to put on the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. Bible says, as I said again, in the sight of God, it is of great price. So if something is of great price to God, how much more to man? So in the sight of God, it is of great 
price. It is of a high value. It is of a high value. So it's something we really, really need to cause. If it's something that is important, you can't do without. And this is, this is one of the most attractive qualities you can have as a woman. And the way I describe it is the ability to be led and the ability to learn. It is the most attractive quality you can have on your inside as a woman. If you take a consensus of men, even the men who term themselves feminist, you would find that this is one of the qualities many people, if not every man, would want his wife to have. The ability to be led and the ability to learn. Now, I know submission is a very controversial topic. And I know that many women are averse to it. You know, it's something on your inside. We're averse to it because you don't want to be, you, do, you feel, I don't want to be a doormat. I don't want to be someone who people, who, who my husband or my spouse, my partner walk, walks over. I don't want to be a voice that is not heard. I don't want to be um, unable to come to the table when it's time to make a decision. I don't want to be the one who's told what to do all the time. And I appreciate it. But you see, this is the main charge that has been given to us by God. Peter said it in this passage. Paul said it so many times. He said it in, in, um, in Ephesians. And I think it's also in Colossians. And you see, everywhere a woman is talked about in the Bible, you see, they say women should learn in silence, in quietness. It is, it is the main thing God has asked us or God demands from us. And we see here, he says, in the sight of God, it is of high, of high value. So let us do it because this is what God demands of us. Let's not just do it because it's a husband, so we submit to my husband. Everything we do as Christians, let us do as unto God. So let us do this as I am obeying God's word. I am obeying God's word. I am doing what God has asked me to do. And then when you have that, that at the back of your mind, it makes it easier. It makes it easier. I know it is said that submission makes you lovable, it makes your husband love you even more. You would get all that, it's all in the package. When you do it as unto God, it is more fulfilling, it is more satisfying. You know, I'm doing this as unto God. I'm being obedient to God's word. And then God who sees you would reward you. God who sees you will make things work out for you. And trust me, at the end of the day, you will have the upper hand. Your voice will be heard. Your opinions will be considered. You will come to the, to the table when it's time to make the decisions, when you have the right attitude. That is the truth. But if you want to be a... You want to be ahead with your husband at the same time, you want to slow things out, you want to quarrel, you want to be contentious, you find out there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of disagreement, there's just instability in the home. It just changes the dynamic of your relationship, it changes the dynamic of the home. So which would you rather do, which would you rather prefer to do? As I said, the ability to be led, the ability to be led. You see, the Bible says in Philippians, let this mind be in you. That was also in our Lord Jesus. You see, Paul was speaking to all the Philippians. But sometimes I think that verse is very, very relevant for a woman. It is very relevant for a woman. 
look at it this way now it says let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus you see Jesus was equal to God in the Amplified I think he says he didn't think equality to God was something to cling to something to to hold on to something to you know he was unable, unable to leave he was equal with God. Equal. But the Bible says that he, he didn't think it was something I have to, I can't go. I have to hold on to it. I have to hold on to it. He said he humbled himself. Humbled himself. He came in man. Humbled himself. He, the death he died was even worse than it. It was not like a king. He died like a king. He died like a, like a criminal. He humbled himself. Death on the cross. Much, 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 much beneath him. He humbled himself and did it. It's so relevant for the woman because if you can think about what it took Christ, what it took of him to do that, he left his majesty. He left. He left everything he was, and he came to earth. And he wasn't. He didn't come and he was a prince or a king. He was in a sense, but he didn't carry himself that way. He was humble. He was born in a manger. He was born into a lowly carpenter's house. He he came and he served God. You know, like a subordinate. Served him. His will was to do what God wanted. He didn't do anything until God had asked him to do it. And my husband keeps saying, if you look at the relationship between God and Jesus, that is the way the relationship between a man and his wife should be. They were equal. Jesus and God equal. But he humbled himself. And you go further in that verse in th that chapter in Philippians. He said, because he did that, God highly exalted him. God highly exalted him. God gave him a name that is above every name. Every name. Every name. In that same way, if you have this attitude, Believe me, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. I know. I know. Believe me, I know. Well, can we do it? Yes, we can do it. Jesus could do it. We can do it. We can do it. And just have the ability to be led. Have the ability to defer. You know, as a single lady, begin to cultivate it. Begin to cultivate it. Think about what God wants you to do. You know, the apostles to, the apostles told the, the council in Acts, he says, We would rather obey God than man. So I know there's this feminist movement going on. I know we all want our voices to be heard. I know people are teaching all sorts of things. Oh yes, but who would you rather obey? We'd rather obey God than man. So this attribute, I've spent so much time on it because I think it is the most important. It is the most important. The Bible says it is, I'll keep saying, in the sight of God, high price, high value. And as I said, if you do it, if you're able to do it, see, you know, just try it out. Do a 30 day trial. Do a 30 day trial of just cultivating this and see if it works out for you. See what happens. See what happens. If you're married to a good man, if you're married to, um, and this is for married women I'm talking about, if you're married to a good man, if you're married to, to a child of God, if you're married, even, even unbelievers, because here, if you see verse 2 of First Peter we've read, he says, even if your husband is not a believer, that they may be won by the conversation of their wives, by the way their wives behave. That they be, may be warned to the Lord. And we know this, there's so many, so many stories. We, we know the story of Smith Wiggles, what's why. We know so many stories where, because of the behavior of the wife, the man came to know the Lord. So many times it's happened over and over and over again. And it is this attitude that was in Christ. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Yes, we can. I think it's something. We should really, really look on. I'm going to quickly go through the other things which are important. 
one of them, the, the first thing is that God is your priority. I should have started from this, but I spent a lot of time because of, of the passage we read. To make that God is your number one. Every man who is a child of the kingdom, you want to marry a woman who is as passionate about God as you are. As passionate about God. Who God is the number one in your life. So you want to marry a woman who, you know, one of the, the things the, the things I I consider when I say is God your first, is not when it comes to your finances, because your finances are like your life. You know, whatever money you earn, you spend time working for it, and that time is your life. So, what do you do with it? The way anyone spends money, the way people react to money and the way they spend money, is a very, very easy way to see what is important to them. So, you don't want to marry a wife or a husband who doesn't give, doesn't care about God's kingdom, is not generous when it comes to God's kingdom, is not generous when it comes to God. These are the things that show what is truly important to this human, to this person. So you want to, 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 to be able to see that this person is God's, God is priority in this person's life. You want to see God is priority to this person. And that God is number one is, is also, is very important. That this person has the ability to grow spiritually, has a hunger, is passionate about God, is passionate about, about growing spiritually, is working on their spiritual life, is not stagnant where they are, is, is, is serving in the house of God. It's very important, service in God's house. Uh, as I said, service is one of those things that helps you to be seen. I'm not saying you should serve God to be seen, but when you serve God, you are seen by default. So when you serve in the house of God, people say, oh, this person, oh, do you know this other person? I know this person who is not Usher here, things like that. I'm not saying you should do this because you want to be seen, but when you serve in the house of God, you are seen. So service in the house of God is also a very attractive quality. And when you serve with all your might, you're not just serving because they said somebody, everyone has to be in a department or because oh, they, they dress up well, they wear nice clothes. That's why you want to serve. No, but you serve because you love God. You cultivate the, the um, fruits of the Spirit. The Bible says about the fruit of the Spirit, it said against this, there is no law. There is no law in the world against the fruit of the Spirit. All the fruits of the, fruit of the Spirit, all the dimensions mentioned in Galatians 5, they are all yes. They are all good. Goodness, gentleness, love, peace, joy, great, great attributes to cultivate. These are things that, you know, people would see and you become attractive on a spiritual level. You become attractive. And believe me, this is the best way to be. This is, this is, this is the hallmark of it all. This is the diamond of, of, of the beautiful pack. You know, this is it. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that we've, we've gotten a few things from, from this. I'm just going to reiterate. We started from reading First Peter chapter three, where God talked, where the Bible talked about a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of high value. And we've talked about the ability to be led and the ability to learn. We've talked about submission. We've talked about the fruit of the spirit. We've talked about making God your number one priority talked about the ability to grow spiritually. These are the uh, spiritual attributes that I think make you an attractive personality and will move you forward in life. These attributes that will help you in the workplace. It will help you all around. It will help you in your family. It will help you in your home. It will help you everywhere you go. It will make you stand out, believe me. I'm hoping that we have learned and I'm hoping that we will practice. The Bible says that let us not be hearers only, deceiving ourselves. Let us be hearers and let us be doers. Amen. So thank you for being with me today. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to his YouTube channel at Saint Vlog. Follow him on Facebook at Chukudum. Follow him on Twitter at Chukudum Oh.